Hello friends, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. Today I'm going to give you guys a comparison review between the Kobo Aura 1 here on the left and the new Kobo Aura H2O on the right, the second gen model. Okay, so uh, they're quite a bit different. I thought that there would be um, less like of a difference between the screen quality between these two. So the Kobo Aura 1 has a 7.8 inch screen and then the Kobo Aura H2O has a 6.8 inch screen. So uh, the Kobo Aura 1 is one of my favorite e-readers. It's got this uh, flush glass screen as you can see here. It's kind of got like a premium design and it's really quite thin and light for its size. It's actually lighter than you'd expect. has this uh, sort of a plastic texture on the back with the power button. So uh, the Aura also has that as well, so uh, they're kind of similar in that regard, but with the flush glass screen and the thinner design, it's just quite a bit nicer. And then the screen, there's quite a bit of difference between the screen quality. You can kind of even see it here as they sit down. Uh, the background color is quite a bit lighter on the Aura 1. Uh, so the Aura uh, H2O here, it has the indented screen, as you can see, uh, but it doesn't have an infrared screen like the older Kobo models did. And then it has this plastic uh, bezel right here. Some of the older models sort of had like a plastic or a rubbery coating, but this one is just sort of like a cheap plastic feel. So I'm kind of disappointed with that. But um, so look at the size difference here. D two millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually feels and looks like a lot when you have it in your hand. Uh, so yeah, the Aura 1 is quite a bit thinner and the screen just has a clearer, crisper quality to it. I think because of the uh, capacitive layer over the Aura H2O. They both have capacitive screens, but something about the uh, glass screen on the Aura 1 just seems to make it look clearer. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the front lights next. The, they both have the front light with the adjustable color temperature, uh, but the color temperature is quite a bit different on these two models. So it might be different from one unit to the next. Front lights kind of vary a lot. so. Uh, it sort of just depends. And the uh, front light's quite a bit brighter on the Aura 1, uh, but uh, they're just like by comparison with the numbers. So if you go to the same numbers, it's quite a bit brighter, but you can just adjust it to different lower settings or higher settings depending on your needs. At the higher se uh, highest setting, the um, uh, Aura H2O is sort of equivalent to the uh, Aura 1 at half setting. So here's a look at the Comfort Light Pro so you can adjust the color temperature. As you can see, vastly different colors. I mean, I was uh, very surprised by this. I just expected them to be the same, um, but they are completely different colors and sort of same goes for medium settings. The Aura H2O just sort of has more of a yellow tone to it. And this has more of a orange, -ish red tone to it. And then they're also different at the, like the blue end of the spectrum as well. The Aura H2O has more of a yellow tone, whereas the uh, Aura 1 has more of a cool tone, so let's go ahead and max these out at the uh, far left here. So as you can see, it's a little bit different colors here too, so quite a bit lighter on the Aura H2 or Aura 1. Same a lot of Auras in this review. It's getting kind of confusing, huh? So like the c screen is just clearer on the Aura 1. Like I was saying in like the front light, it just makes the background seem like a, more of a white tone where you've got sort of a yellower color on here. So the screen looks fine when you have it on your own. I'm not trying to bash the screen or anything. It's just a completely different look to it than the Aura 1. I was surprised. So you got 300 PPI on the Aura 1 and 265 on the H2O. Usually there's not much of a difference between those two. So I wasn't expecting it to be as big of a difference as it is. As, as you can see here, even like the background is just lighter on the Aura 1 than it is on the H2O. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on the camera then translate it through YouTube, but it's quite a striking difference in person. Uh, the older Kobo Aura H2O had an infrared screen, and it just had a level of clarity. The text kind of floated off the screen, and with the capacitive screen, you kind of don't get that. So uh, as far as hardware, they have the same exact internal components. Screen or page turnings are ba basically the that exact same. I mean, they both have the same 1 gigahertz processor, the same components internally. So uh, uh, the lower res screens usually uh, react a little bit faster. So, I mean, you can get just a, like a little bit faster reaction, but for the most part, they're almost identical. Going to the home screen, loading books, so it might just be a little bit faster on the H2O, um, but pretty much the same. So, one of the only the only real difference between the software, I'm not even gonna get into the software. I'll just check out the main reviews for the software features. The really the only software difference is the Kobo Aura One. It supports OverDrive directly, so you can go to the Kobo store, connect your OverDrive account, and you can uh, download eBooks through your public library for free. Have them downloaded directly to your device, whereas um, the or H2O, you can do that, but it has to be, you can get books from your library, but you have to do it with a computer and you have to sideload them. So like even when you're just browsing books over here, you'll have the option on the Aura 1 to place a hold with OverDrive, or you can download it through OverDrive if it's available. 
So uh, obviously you don't have that option on any other Kobo e-readers. That's just a Kobo Aura 1 feature. So that's pretty cool. All right, so just to kind of summarize, like I was saying, the, the Aura 1 has got the more of the premium design. The uh, H2O, it's just kind of got this uh, plastic front here. It just kind of has a cheap feel to it. I kind of wish they'd added a layer to it or something. But then the Aura uh, 1, it's got that glass screen, so it's got the higher quality feel to it. Uh, the back is mostly the same, but uh, it feels quite a bit lighter for some reason. Uh, it's weird because the Aura 1 actually weighs 23 grams more than the H2O. But just somehow the larger size and the thinner design just seems to like disperse the weight more evenly across your hand. It, it feels lighter in your hand, just a little bit lighter than the H2O. It's kind of weird. So you can kind of hold along the bezel here. Either way, you're going to kind of rub the screen if you move your thumb in. So some people like the indented screen. Some people like the glass screens. I just like the ones that work, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Uh, like I said, these uh, two e-readers, I mean, they're $50 difference in price, so not a huge difference there. Cobalt One's quite a bit thinner, quite a bit nicer, so front light is better, a little bit clearer. So I don't know. I really like the Aura One. They're both waterproof. They both have the same hardware features. Generally, they have the same software features other than the overdrive support directly on the Aura One, which is nice. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Check out the written review for more details. Thank you guys for watching.